Hoseo. Hoseo. Good Cherokee greeting. Wave the great feather for the good of it. My theme today is going to be Jason, the Argos, Medea, and Athena. My inspiration for this theme has come about. It was a couple of weeks ago during the week of 9-11. Our granddaughter had her first birthday, one year old, and her name is Athena. And she lives next door to us with her mother. And at the same time, on the other side of us next door, this couple had gone over to Greece and visited Athens and the Parthenon, that is the Temple of Athena. And all the while, another neighbor, a couple doors down from them, she has been touring the Greek Isles. And yesterday she's been and she's been sending us text photos. And yesterday she sent us a text photo of the marina in Athens. So you see, um, it looks like a good time to be talking about this this theme here. <clears throat> uh, there was a movie made by Hollywood, I think in the 60s, it was in color. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the title was, but what it is, is Jason and the Argonauts. And uh, it was pretty good. Uh, probably they had relied for their source on a, a real ancient source, and that was, uh, it's a, uh, what do I call it, a... Um, trying to think, oh, a literary, a literary anthology that's by uh, Apollonius of Rhodes. And um, that was about the third century BCE, and uh, it's about 700 years after Homer's Odyssey. And so the movie has, you know, that mixture, and uh, the earlier legends that uh, um, Apollonius had brought into it probably included uh, the Odyssey. It looks it looks like that. So the movie kind of had that mixture and drew heavily upon that source. Uh, some of the things in the movie are very interesting. Of course, there's a lot of things that are really fantastic in it. And one of the things that they did have a Greek ship, because that's what this is about, a Greek ship. And this Greek ship was um, in the movie, uh, it was Greek. And I think it had an eye painted on the bow, and it did have sails, you know. Um, the early ships didn't have sails, you know. But I should start a little bit more at the beginning. Uh, the movie seemed to be really following the theme of Jason's pursuit of the Golden Fleece. Now, the Golden Fleece, that part of it, is really an interpolation. It's an interpolation into the... Uh, uh, into the original theme of the legend to obtain the sanction from Athena for the reclamation project in Boeotia. And this interpolation is evidence of the synthesis of a new systematic mythology, Zeusism, which owes little or nothing with what it has inherited or borrowed. And likewise, the M.O., of the Greco-Roman or Latin church, etc. there. Um, so showing a little bit, I mean, that's important to, to know. But of the ship itself, if you can uh, here look at this picture here. <clears throat> I have replicated this exactly. This is from a, a painting on a pottery vessel found in eastern Thessaly uh, at the um, in vicinity called, I think, something like the port or the harbor of the moon. And it is the Argo. Exactly. Now, uh, these early ships did not have sails. Sails were not applied to ships until after, at least in myth, uh, Daedalus had fashioned uh, wings for his son Icarus to fly out of the labyrinth. Um, that's the myth, myth of it. So this is amazing to actually find this. <clears throat> Now, to go back more or less to the beginning, Boeotia is like northeast of Athens, Attica, and um, it, it's, it, it's inland, and there are two rivers that flow down from the mountains uh, on each side north of that, and it floods the land. 
So the king there, he wanted to have a reclamation of the land. So that meant he was going to have to do some management about the rivers. And to do that, he had to get sanction or permission from Athena. Athena somehow is the chief manager of all waters. And so to do that, he had commissioned this fellow, Jason in English, his name in Greek is Yasin, and that means healer. He's a medicine man, and he's from Epirus. Uh, mainly because Epirus, which is on the very west side of Greece, along the Adriatic Sea, is also the site of the oracle at the Dona of Amathea, which is to say, he's also got uh, Amathea, you know, his blessings for his project. Now, to carry this out, um, he has to travel all the way over to a town, Colchis. Colchis is on the southeast side of what is now the Black Sea. Then it was called the Yuxin Sea. It was a large freshwater lake. <clears throat> and there, that's where Medea resides with uh, her father, the king, I would say. And uh, she's the sister of Athena. So that's the connection he has to make to carry out his commission here. So. Uh, very interestingly, uh, this image that I have here, this ancient Greek image, I think this is a very good likeness for Jason or Yeson because he's wearing a mariner's hat. So it's good to have a little fellow in here to illustrate this. <clears throat> now, uh, the Yuxin Sea, again, is a large freshwater sea, and all this region, including uh, Thessaly, where the Argo is being built and launched from, is also the ancient, very, very ancient, what we call the goddess culture that Maria Gambudis has so ardently reported on. <laughs> um, and probably um, this legend that Apollonius has, has fashioned, compiled together, uh, probably basically draws upon an earlier material because here the Argo, by the way, Argo would mean something like a greyhound, like a greyhound bus, you know. And um, it would be the ship of renewal in the goddess culture, you know, on this water. I'm not sure what Colchis means, but Colchis was reportedly famed for uh, its herbology, for exporting herbs or herbal knowledge and medicine, which was uh, very important for uh, the Greeks, you know. Um, but even after uh, the time of, the, of this legend, uh, we're talking about the pursuit of the Golden Fleece legend, Medea has been sullied and um, falsified forever. I mean, that's gone on and on with her. Um, like she's, again, a bad person. All of this Zeus mythology has, you know, really done this. It's uh, uh, blackened all of the goddesses and and their, their culture. So I thought I would do something good and set it straight and reinstate Medea uh, as the medicine woman. She's also the herbalist and priestess. She's the priestess of Hecate, the, he's the uh, frog-headed goddess of regeneration. So this is my portrait of her over here. This is Medea as she should be properly seen and regarded in that way. And so with the, in the movie, one of the most amazing scenes, well, first of all, in the movie, while Jason and the, the Argos are sailing, no, rowing, no, they're sailing across the, the, the sea there, <laughs> they encounter Medea in the water. Uh, and she, her boat had floundered, and the wreckage of her boat was all around her and that was in reeds. So this signified that she's an Egyptian. That is, the place that she resides, Colchis, is a Egyptian colony. It's an Egyptian colony together with Nubian people. Nubians are people exactly south of um, Egypt, the southern part of Egypt, and uh, they're East Africa. It's now they're called, it's called Sudan. Nubia is now Sudan. <coughs> And so in the movie, you know, they do see people with woolly hair. So that's 
also very, very interesting. Um, and there in the movie, one of the most notable scenes is Medea, that she's sitting like in a throne, and behind her is a huge statue with the frog's head of Hecate. And there, Medea puts on this huge dark or black stole or mantle. This is a, a good sign. This is also it's sometimes called Nubia, you know, this, this huge stole. And this exactly relates her to Athena. You know, I can tell you why later. But that is a very interesting part of uh, the movie. Also, what she's been so vilified for, I'm sure, is that how she knows potions. And she gave a potion to Jason to diminish or dissolve his male ego because in order to approach Athena, that's how we're, we're putting it, he can't have his male ego. We're still in the realm of the ancient goddess you know, in this way. Uh, so that was, that was very uh, significant there. And then somehow how he transports way over to Libya. Libya is really the place of, uh, birthplace of Athena. Uh, in the mythology of Zeus, however, it, it goes, it's worse because it has Zeus swallows Metis. Metis is, is part of Athena in the whole myth of her and the Medusa, Medusa, Metis. Zeus swallowed her and because he swallowed her then he got pregnant and then he gave birth to Athena out of the top of his head. Outrageous. Just outrageous, you know. Um, <clears throat> Uh, just saying how, how, how far they, they will go. Um, so anyway, after you know, uh, Medea gives Jason a potion, then uh, his boat, you know, the Argos, is, and this is you know, a line in, in the legend, is pulled by the Tritons, pulled by its keel over to Libya. The Tritons are you know, aquatic beings, uh, somewhat like mermaids, uh, we have seashells that are spiral seashells, we call them tritons, so all that seems to be mixed into it. And west of the Nile of Egypt uh, is still, I think, a city, Sais, and that's the capital of that part of Egypt, they call Lower Egypt. And west of there was the shore of a huge ancient lake, and that lake has also been called Triton. I think after uh, Tritos, Tritos, who was actually the goddess of the water of that lake, and it seems to be sister also to Amphitrites, who was the goddess of the Mediterranean Sea itself there. So when uh, Jason got there to the shore of Lake Triton, Athena appeared to him. And that's what my painting is here. I had this painting to uh, stand for that where Athena appeared to Jason. I've actually replicated this painting on an artifact. An artifact that I saw a photo of in a book uh, that was found in ruins somewhere in the Mediterranean. I don't remember exactly where. And uh, I've replicated it quite quite exactly. And what it is here, she is a mollusk. She is a bivalve mollusk. <laughs> and her hands are in the shape of an amphora. And up here I put a frog. Uh, this is Hecate. Hecate. Um, she stands for the goddess of regeneration. So we have all of this in here. I'm very uh, proud of this painting. And I take it, these are clouds here uh, called nubes. So somehow that seems to figure into this. Maybe it has to do with her mantle. The, uh, the creature that we're calling a mollusk, you know, has a mantle in it. That, that, that's, that's part of it. And that mantle itself is called a polis or pala. The 
the uh, Greek word pala means cloak or mantle, something to that effect. So that's very much a part of all of this that I've named the painting uh, Pallas here. So Athena is also called Pallas Athena. And back to the name Athena, here where she did appear to Jason, that became a shrine or a temple. And the name in Egyptian, because that's right here on the border of Egypt, is Niet. Niet is the name of her. In Libya, again, Libya is the Greek name for Lamia, and Lamia is this mollusk goddess of this lake, Triton. So the L becomes N in Egypt, and it came out as Niet. So now this place is a shrine, and it's called a hut, like we have a hut pronounced Het-Niet, het -niet. and that Het-Niet, the Greeks translated into the name Athena. <clears throat> so, so you can see how some of these things uh, might, might work. And so thereafter, you know, she's Athena, and we're, and we're talking about Athena, and she became, becomes the, the uh, protector of the city of Athens. <clears throat> uh, however, um, whether uh, the king of Boeotia got his reclamation project finished, it's not in the story. Uh, but the city of Athena, now, if she's been transformed here in Athens, this very miniature statue I have is miniature of a huge statue. Uh, Pericles, I think, was having um, Athens rebuilt after one of the Persian invasions, and he rebuilt you know, the Parthenon. Uh, the Acropolis is uh, like a big butte above the city. And it had you know, long been, had temples on it and even much earlier fortifications of the Mycenaeans. Uh, but now was a huge building called the Parthenon. And in it, uh, Phidias had, had made this huge statue, it had a lot of gold on it, it was about more than 40 feet high here, and has all of the symbols. So now from the Molos, you know, she's been transform it into uh, a human, uh, so she does have the sense of the shield with her shield, you know, like the shell and the shield, and uh, she has a, a column here. This column in the goddess culture is, is Hera, uh, the, we call it the original matron, and on top of that is uh, Nike here. And then down in front of it, this is an actual uh, it, um, Greek figure for Athena, the owl. The owl is her symbol. And on her collar, I actually put a little uh, goatskin collar on her. She wears the Aegis. That's what the Aegis is that I think kind of turned into the golden fleece. And usually she has the head of the Gorgon there because that's also the Medusa. And in the original sculpture, she had snakes all coming out of it. <clears throat> so here, the sun is shining right on, on this piece here while we're talking about Athena. You can look at that one. <laughs> uh, this is a, a, br a bronze medallion from Greece with uh, the owl and her name uh, written in Greek letters there. So that's a, an old looking piece. Should I close up line? Mm -mm. There. Um, now, well, we're, we're talking about all this. Over here, down this, this pot, this amphora pot, this is from the Isle of Rhodes. <clears throat> and it's been like a talisman for me. And I've highlighted here, it, it has you know, figures all around it. And this figure here, a vignette of Athena, is very interesting with her uh, repertoire of snakes. And what identifies her as Athena, uh, she has a lance. She's carrying a lance. This is the, the veil, the lance of knowledge that, of course, dispels ignorance and other bad things. So that's very interesting because um, the detail of this vignette is very sensitive. I'm really amazed whoever uh, made this piece. 
And another piece from the Isle of Rhodes is, is, is right here. This is a perfume bottle. And it's from uh, 650 BCE. So you can see something of uh, the style that was rendered of women or priestesses in the ancient Mediterranean culture. <clears throat> I gotta close some of these uh, blinds here. Mm. Still bright. It's okay. Okay. <clears throat> now another thing that that relates to this the, the, the most here, this piece, this is actually painted over here in Nevada in Pyramid Lake. Previously, you know, I have showed other paintings on the Tupa uh, rock there, and one of those, I've, I've titled it, you know, the Sphinx of Pyramid Lake, <clears throat> and certainly ancient people have been there and did ancient paintings on it. So, sort of aside from this huge uh, edifice that I'm referring to, there's an individual structure, amazingly, uh, made of tufa, I guess, and it's a kind of a, a cell, uh, a, an enclosure with an opening and it kind of curves like the inside of a shell. And on the inside, you know, this is painted. Now this image related to this image is called polis. And the polis, you know, becomes the whole thing in itself. So the, very, the, the one on the rock is about twice the size of my painting here. In India, it would be, I think, a yantra, a yantra which actually has, you know, the, the deity or her energy painted in red for uh, contemplation. So whoever had painted this there was relating this to this huge edifice that is naturally made, uh, as Baba called the female sphinx. So. Then with the mythology of Zeus, who appropriated everything, he, he appropriated this, and it became called the Palladium. And here, what I have here, this little piece here, uh, it became the thunderbolt of Zeus. Now this piece here is actually from Tibet, and it's a thunderbolt scepter. But I gauge that it did resemble very much the thunderbolt of Zeus which has been derived from the polis of Athena here. And another thing, while we're looking here, if you look, I have another ancient thing, you focus on that. Um, I have a small collection of very ancient, uh, we call them oil lamps. Now the oil lamps, as far as the ancient goddess culture is concerned, are ostensibly yoni symbols. They're yoni symbols, um, with the wick actually being in Greek the clitoris. The clitoris, and in India, that's called a vagshif. Uh, this piece here uh, is unique. It's all been embossed, and it has all these symbols of the goddess culture here, <clears throat> and including something that the Greeks called the labri, the labris. Uh, English is calling it a double-headed axe. Now, just for a moment, can you go up here and look at this? This is my replica of the Labris. And it has vines on it, as sometimes it is illustrated like this. And it is utterly ubiquitous through the whole ancient uh, culture of the goddess, the feminine culture. Um, there, and there's all kinds, They're from little ones to giant ones, made in every kind of material you can think of, uh, including, you know, paintings here. <clears throat> and here, uh, to look back down here, um, there's no image or anything that would show that anybody is actually wielding an axe. Some of the paintings, frescoes, you know, show what look like priestesses, you know, um, holding it, you know, holding it up like a scepter, like that. But 
there are images here, and these I'm sure are the original images. What this Lapras is, is itself a yoni symbol. In India, um, this degenerative organ would be Sukhavati. And so here I put this is actually a Hindu uh, piece. I put it in the place of where on the lamp the wick would be as being her Bhagshif here. In India, in the Hindu, somehow it's become mispronounced as a male phallus. Uh, so everybody seems to be making the same mistake, but they, they call it the lingam in the yoni. Uh, lingam is not a word for phallus. It is you know, the mark or the characteristic. The characteristic of her yoni is her bhakshi. So that would be practically revolutionary. And then another thing I have, I have here to uh, demonstrate all this. Well, I have a frog here for Hecate. Randy gave me this frog. <laughs> but this vase, you know, from uh, oh, 5480 BCE, features um, Sappho. Sappho, the poet, poetess there. And she, um, really, really famous in all this time, uh, she lived like in the 6th century BCE, uh, the island called Lesbos, where the name lesbian comes from. So uh, Lesbos, now I think it's called Metitli, uh, the island itself. Uh, and maybe later, I've made a portrait of, of, of Sapo, so another time I think I can talk about her. Uh, like that. So that's why I have that here, because it's feminine, and that's what all this is, you know, for for her, for the feminine. Um, oh yes, I meant to show you this. So here you can see what, actually if you put it together, uh, the bivalve mollusk is. And these are scallops. And the Greek word for the scallops is kathesis. Kathesis is also the word for the yoni. Um, so, and there's famous painting by the Italian painter of oh, the 5th, 6th century, Botticelli, showing Aphrodite in her bath, or sometimes called Venus in her bath, but I guess Aphrodite, and she is, you know, sort of standing in or emerging out of the scallop, which rather suggests that Botticelli knew what he was painting about. <laughs> so uh, the scallop and her goes together. So this was all the original story, legend, theme for Jason's uh, pursuit of uh, Athena and where her name actually originated at. Probably she was more often called Pallas, I think, uh, before she became renowned as Athena and then people, she became the patron uh, of, of her and, you know, in this I'll show you this little vignette here uh, with all the snakes around her. So notably, what differentiates her is her main attribute, she's holding a lance. And in all the images of her she all, that I have, she also always seems to be holding that lance as her attribute. Otherwise, she would be indistinguishable from what we would say is the snake goddess here. Now, in the interest of um, redeeming and reinstating Medea, I want to read a poem by Claudia Pocla from her book here. This book is uh, Mangoes Without Borders. Absolutely beautiful here. Uh, part of it is my illustration. The whole artwork has been rendered by uh, Tim Britton, who also, you know, puts uh, my Kyrie talks up on his site. So. That's the, the book, and on the back is the most touching photograph of Claudia out here at um, Pyramid Lake, isn't it? Somewhere, I don't know where it is, out here. Imperial Beach. Oh, it's in Imperial Beach, you The said. farm. Okay. Anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful book done by the most beautiful person. 
So first we had, you know, um, Jason, Yasin, who is a medicine man, and then we had Medea, who is a medicine woman, and then we have Athena, she's all about uh, good medicine, and the bag sheep, you know, that's what it means. It also means that it, 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 it's an organ of, of good fortune and happiness. So, here, the curandera. Shush, 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 shush. Hear her coming. She's approaching. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Her skirts, the wind in desert palms. Curandera. She is coming, seeking sounds to cure our sadness. Bzzz, 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 bzzz. Hear the sound of something buzzing. Bzzzzum, bzzzzum. See the rattler's tail is shaking. Curandera, she is listening, for these rattles speak the truth. Shuk, 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 shuk. Bladder pods have started singing with mesquite and chili peppers. Agave, agave husks and pine cone shakers. Curandera waits no longer for the song that heals the land. Burble, 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 blub. Hear the brook, it joins the chanting. Jay and raven adding high notes. Flicker beats the wooden drum. Earth again can be heard laughing. Kudendera finally sleeps. <laughs> thank you, thank you everybody. <laughs>